Hey guys, Josh here, and on May 26, 2022, my time at Sandrock, the sequel to my time at Porsche, finally released in early access on Steam. This is a game I've been looking forward to for quite some time now. It had been delayed numerous times as the developer Patia Games had to wait for certification from their government before releasing the game. But now everything is in order, it is finally available for everyone to play. So I would like to tell you what I think of this game so far and also how it compares to its predecessor. Pathia Games kindly sent me a review key for the game about 3 weeks ago so I've played a fair bit already. Keep in mind, the game is still in early access so this is not a full review as some features are still incomplete and there may be a bit more bugs than there will be in the full release. But hopefully this should give you a pretty good idea of how the game is like and if it's for you. So let's start with the story characters and overall setting of the game. First thing you'll do of course is to create your character. It is pretty similar to how it was in Porsche, where you'll get to pick between male and female, your character's voice, hairstyle, adjust some facial features to your liking. But now we have a bit more options and flexibility than in the past. For example, when picking your hairstyle, you get to choose the base style, but now you can also add some bangs and ponytails if you'd like, and adjust the length for each one of these parts individually for more customization. That's just one example, but if you're familiar with character creation in My Time at Porsche, you can expect something very similar here with Senrak, but everything has been improved a little bit, making the experience more enjoyable, and you'll notice this pattern to be true for most of the game. It's like Porsche, but improved. Once your character is created, you'll take the train to Senrak, where you will replace Mason, a retiring builder who's planning to leave the town. At first, Senrak doesn't look like the most welcoming place. It's in the desert, water is very scarce, there isn't much to do for tourists and villagers, but on the other hand, as a builder, there's so much work to do that it's hard to keep track of everything. You'll get commissions to build things for the town, do part-time jobs or errands to help local businesses, and you'll protect Sandrock from threats that are becoming more and more frequent, all of this while braving the sandstorms. I usually don't pay too much attention to the story in these type of games, but with Sandrock, I found it really engaging. Whether it is the main story or one of the multiple side quests, partly thanks to the way events are animated with cutscenes, as well as the brilliant and diverse cast doing the voiceover, it's very easy to follow along and stay entertained. However, I think that the biggest thing for me is I felt everything I did had an actual impact. For example, one quest will require you to plant flowers to decorate around Sandrock. Well, when you do that, flowers will actually stay there from that point on, so whenever you pass by these flowers, you will remember the time that you planted them and it's just nice to see that it actually makes a difference in how the town looks. For another quest, Justice, one of the characters, will ask you to craft a hat and he will then give that hat to his cat, Captain. And from that point on, when you go around town, you'll see Captain wearing the hat. Little details like these are everywhere in this game and it really makes you feel like you're evolving with the town gradually and you're really having an impact on the stories and lives of the characters. And when you talk with these people, they'll very often have unique dialogues referring to the events happening in town and the latest things you've accomplished. This made me want to speak with everyone frequently just to see what they had to say and it's just nice to see that they actually acknowledge what's happening around them. It makes them feel very alive. And I would say that relationships as a whole are just so interesting in this game. Not only because the dialogues are diverse, but also just for the little details. Like, for example, in order to know someone's birthday, you'll have to wait for them to actually tell you once you start befriending them. So you won't magically have everybody's birthday marked on your calendar the very first day you move to Sandrock. It's actually something you'll have to discover gradually, and for me it really helps getting immersed into the game. It's the same for the gifts, so sometimes the villagers will give you hints about items that they like, and you'll have to give them things before they are added to their list of likes and dislikes. I'm pretty sure this was the same in Porsche, but it's a feature I really like, it makes it fun to try to find out what people like and dislike. So in most games, chatting with people and giving gifts are the two main ways to increase your relationships. However, in my time at Senrock, there's so much more you can do. For example, you can also fight with your friends in a duel just for fun, or you can play Critter Cards, which is a mini game pretty similar to Rock, Paper, Scissors. You can also go on a date, you can complete commissions for them, there's so much you can do. And as you deepen your relationships, you will unlock perks, such as increased stats or maybe discounts in the different shops. And for me, to be honest, usually I always struggle to get interested in relationships in these types of games, and I usually don't talk to anyone until the end game. But here in my time at Sunrock, thanks to all of the interesting and changing dialogues, 
the mini games, and just how you get to discover the characters' personalities and backstory through the different quests. I'm feeling more engaged than usual to that aspect of the game, and I try to interact with the villagers daily. Keep in mind that currently romance has not been fully implemented yet, but we can expect marriage and children with the full release of the game, which should be sometime next year. Now I'd like to talk a bit about the world, so the first difference you'll notice going from Porsche to Sandrock is that it's not as green, there's no grass, there's barely any water, it's pretty much all sand and rock. At first, I was wondering how that would feel like, and of course it's not as colorful as its predecessor, but they still managed to make it look interesting. Even though you're always surrounded by sand and rocks, the background and things you see in the distance make all the difference. For example, around your workshop you'll have a beautiful view of the town, in other places you may have a view on some ruins or some mountains, but there's always something grand and beautiful to look at, and they did a great job at making the desert not look boring and repetitive. We also still have four seasons, so spring, summer, autumn, and winter, and each one looks a little bit different. For example, in autumn you'll see the leaves turning orange, and there's gonna be a little bit of snow in the winter, so you still have some variety with the seasons, and I have to say that graphically, it's also a step up from my time at Porsche. It's a bit more demanding in terms of performance. I'm sorry, by the way, if my footage is not always perfectly smooth. The game was stuttering a little bit, and whether I played in low or high graphics didn't seem to make any difference. So I'm not sure if it's my computer or just the game that needs a bit more optimization. But just keep that in mind if you have a PC that's not very powerful. However, as I was saying, it is a step up graphically. I especially really enjoyed the lighting and how it changed throughout the day, as well as how the characters look and the little details like their hair moving around and the different animations. I would say it's one of the best looking games in the crafting or farming sim genre out there right now. So now let's talk a little bit about the gameplay. This game is of course mostly about crafting and crafting in games is something I sometimes love, sometimes hate, depending on how it's done. Just so you know where I'm coming from, I don't like games with convoluted crafting mechanics, with never-ending crafting chains where you need to transform things multiple times just to make one item, complicated recipes and ingredients that are just annoying to gather. I like crafting when it's very simple and straight to the point. At first, just like its predecessor, my time at Sandrock can look a bit overwhelming. There are tons of different crafting stations, like a work table, a grinder, a processor, a furnace, and it takes a while to remember exactly which does what, and you'll often have to process an item through multiple stations. For example, the ores into the furnace to make some bars, and then the bars into the processor, or maybe it was the grinder, I can't remember, to make nails. But there's rarely more steps than that, so it's kept pretty simple. And what I really like is that each crafting station has a tab where it tells you exactly what you need to craft for your different quests, so you don't have to spend too much time figuring that out, and even though it looks complex, it's pretty simple. I also really like how this game manages chests and inventory, so you'll be collecting tons of different items all the time, but things like the ability to expand your backpack at any time, anywhere by using coins, sorting and transfer features to keep your chest well organized, also all the chests being connected to each other, meaning you can see the content of all of your chests simply by opening one of them. Also the ability to replace a small chest with a bigger one without having to transfer the items manually. And most important of all, crafting with items that are in your chest so that you don't have to take anything out, you don't need to have something in your backpack to craft with it. So this game is filled with little quality of life features like these that make sure crafting is never too tedious or annoying. So most of these quality of life features were already in my time at Porsche, but this game also gives us some new stuff. So for example, in this game, all of the crafting stations need to be powered by water, which you can buy at the store, so that's not too much of a problem, and also fuel. So in Porsche, for fuel you could use wood or power stones which you would find a bit later in game. One problem I had with Porsche is that I would always use all of my wood to fuel my crafting stations. I would run out all the time and then also I never had enough wood when I actually needed it for crafting. It got very tedious quickly, but in Sandrock, of course you can also use wood and power stones, but you can also use dregs, which you'll find a lot while mining and going through piles of scrap. So you'll most likely always have some of these for fueling your stations, and you'll be able to keep your wood for crafting. Another thing is you can now mix and match different types of fuel. For example, you can add a few bits of dregs and a few bits of wood, or maybe a few power stones, 
Whereas in Persia you were limited to one type of fuel at a time, and since I started playing Senraka and never ran out of fuel, I almost never run out of wood as well, and it just feels great. Another big quality of life improvement is with the assembly station. So the assembly station allows you to craft bigger items that you wouldn't be able to make with the smaller stations, and usually that's where you'll make the things to rebuild the town, so it's pretty important. In Porsche, you needed to select each required material in your toolbar, and then you had to aim at the spot where it was needed in the build in order to build it. It was really tedious because with crafting stations, you could craft anything as long as the materials were in your chest, but somehow the game was super picky with the assembly station, and you really needed to select it in your toolbar, but in Sandrock, it's a lot easier. You still need to have the items in your inventory, but there is no need to select each one individually. You just go to the assembly station, press a button to place the item. You no longer need to be at a very precise spot. And this might seem like a small change, but if you've played Porsche, you'll most likely really appreciate it. It makes a big difference. Another nice addition is the recycler. So like in most crafting games, you'll need tons of different items. In Porsche, I felt like no matter how often I went mining and gathering, I always ran out of everything, and in Sandrock you'll find scraps everywhere like piles of wood scrap or plastic scrap, stone scrap, copper scrap and so much more, and you can put these scraps in the recycler to get useful materials. For example, a copper scrap has a chance to give you a copper bar or a copper stick, as well as dregs and power stones, which as I mentioned earlier can be used for fuel. So there are many times when I found myself missing one simple item, so I just put some scraps in the recycler and I got what I needed without having to go back to the mines. All of these little quality of life features combined make for a great crafting experience. It never feels tedious, and since everything you do has a long lasting impact, even regular commissions, since they will improve your relationships and the ranking of your workshop, everything you craft feels rewarding and there's a clear sense of progression in everything that you do. Farming was also given more importance than in Porsche, so you can now plant crops directly into the soil, you no longer need to put everything in planter boxes, and your soil will level up the more you use it. You'll first have to prepare the soil with some straw to protect your crops from the wind and sand, then you'll plant your seeds, water them, and use fertilizer if you'd like to have a bigger yield. I found watering the crops a bit annoying to be honest, it is pretty slow and uses up a lot of water, but the good thing is they will stay watered for a few days so you don't have to do this every morning. I don't know if there will be some sprinklers or any other way to water more than one crop at a time later in game, but that's definitely something I would love to see. There's also cooking in this game, but I'm 30 hours in and I haven't cooked a single meal yet, and I don't think it's a bad thing, it's just that there's so much to do in this game, I didn't have time to do everything yet. There's mining, crafting, fishing, relationships, festivals, which are a lot of fun by the way, mini games, commissions, decorating your workshop, outside and inside, upgrading your crafting stations, taking care of animals, exploring ruins, defeating monsters, and so much more. There's always something to do and something to work towards. I had a hard time putting the game down because there was always just one more thing, one last thing that I wanted to do, you know, it's just one more day and I ended up playing for a whole other month. It is really fun, really addictive, and just like in Porsche, I can also choose the length of a day. So by default, days are pretty short, around 12 minutes, I think. So you'll have to choose what you do on each given day and it's gonna be pretty fast paced which I like, but you can also have longer days if you prefer to take things slowly and do more different things in a day. And I really enjoy the flexibility that the game offers to suit different playstyles, allowing everyone to enjoy the game in their own way. And that's true for the game as a whole, by the way, except for a few quests and commissions with limited time, you can do pretty much anything you want, whenever you want, and at your own pace. The last big part of this game I would like to address is the combat. Once again, this was improved quite a bit from Porsche, which a lot of people found to be lackluster. This time you can pick from four melee weapon types, so there's a one-handed, two-handed, daggers, and spear. There's also a pistol for long-range combat. And the first big improvement is obviously this diversity and how there's different weapon types to fit each player's preferred style. And the combat also just feels smoother, the animations are better, and you can unlock a few simple combos for each weapon type when you level up your combat skills. They also added a break mechanic where if you hit an enemy multiple times in a row, they will get stunned for a few seconds. And you can also dodge, you can roll just like you could in Porsche. But once again, this time around, it just feels a bit smoother and all of these things combined make the combat feel much better than in the past. Also, not exactly combat related, 
But one more thing I would like to mention is that while in Portia you can only sprint for a little while before your character got exhausted, in Sandrock you can sprint continuously and there's even an option letting you choose if you want to sprint by holding the button or just toggling it once. And this makes walking or sprinting between the different areas a lot more fun and a lot faster. Fast travel is also unlocked a lot faster in this game. So there are stops located all around Senrock and as you unlock new areas you will have to build more. But in Porsche, if I remember correctly you had to build all of them or most and it was very tedious so that's another plus for Sandrock. There's just so much I would like to say about this game but I don't want this video to drag too long and of course the game is still in early access so a lot of the things I said in this video may change at any time. But to wrap up, I will say that I'm very impressed by how much content there is in this early access and how everything feels so polished. And also, apparently there's only a third of the main story that's been implemented as of now, but I'm 30 hours in and I still have not reached that point. And even besides the main story, there's just so much side content. I think it is worth jumping to the game right now if you're interested. I also have not encountered many bugs, just a few maybe funny looking animations, maybe some performance issues. And one time I actually got really scared because I got a pop-up saying my save file got corrupted. But actually it was perfectly fine and I didn't lose any progress, so I'm not too sure what happened. But still, I would recommend you always save your game in two different slots, just in case something wrong happens with one of them. If you liked my time at Porsche, you'll definitely like my time at Senrak. And if, like me, you liked Porsche, but maybe you were annoyed with a few things, like some aspects of the game being a bit tedious, like fueling your crafting stations and building things on the assembly station, then you'll have a better time with Senrak than with Porsche, I think. And if you didn't like Porsche at all, then keep in mind that this game is still pretty much the same thing at its core. It's a really good sequel, it keeps everything that was fun from the first game, improves on the bad parts, and that's a great step forward for the series. I also like that it takes place in the same universe, so fans will recognize some characters and references to the first game. However, it's not necessary to have played it in order to enjoy. So while Sandrock is now available in early access on Steam, the full release won't be until 2023 and the Switch version will have to wait a bit after that. If you can, I think it is worth playing right now. You don't need to have played Parsha to enjoy it as I just said. But if you would like to play Parsha, it is on most consoles right now, even iOS and Android. But I think the PC version is the best in terms of graphics and performance. So I think that's the way to go if you can. And it goes on sale pretty often on Steam, so feel free to check it out. On the other hand, if you start with Sandrock, I think it might be a bit harder to go back to Porsche after that, just because so many things have been improved. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say on this game so far. We waited a long time for the early access, but I'm having a lot of fun with my time at Sandrock. Let me know your thoughts, if you played it or not, what you liked and disliked about this game. Leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more Sandrock content like this, and I'll see you all in the next video.